Today's video is going to be about Ruby and her diagnosis and treatment of adrenal disease. I apologize in advance for my voice. I was sick and my voice has not yet recovered. I actually feel really fine. I just sound really terrible. I noticed about a week and a half to two weeks ago that her vulva was really swollen. Um, I assumed that it was adrenal disease. That is a sign and a symptom of adrenal disease in female ferrets. And so I, of course, made her a bad appointment. We went into the vet. The vet determined that um, we had caught it probably pretty early. So we scheduled a surgery. When he went in, he could see that her left adrenal gland was, in fact, um, affected by it. He removed it. That will is basically the only cure for adrenal disease if you can cure it. You can also do um, the hormone, the, in the injections. But it was in her case, it was smarter and wiser and easier to just take the adrenal gland out and just kind of nip the problem in the bud so far for right now. Um, so basically, she should be fine moving forward. She just has to recover from surgery. She does have stitches up her entire stomach. Um, she's very irritated that she has to be kept in the cage. She hates it. I do let her out occasionally um, here or there because I've noticed that she's been getting really upset being locked in the cage, which then causes her to do things she shouldn't, which puts her health in jeopardy, um, biting on the bars, ripping out her stitches, just acting out because she hates being in the cage. As many of you probably know, my ferrets are not forced to be locked in a cage, and so locking her in a cage has been challenging, to say the very least. So, she's out right now, but... I have to put her back when I'm not with her I don't allow her to be out and I don't allow her to be out long she does like I said if you're not good with gore turn it now I'm gonna wait three seconds and I'll show you her stomach okay so here's her incision she has started kind of pulling away at the stitches fortunately the vet stitches from the inside out also so those exterior stitches while they are loose um, her stomach opening is not fully dependent on those exterior stitches I am going to call the vet on Monday just to make sure everything is okay because when Bear pulled out his stitches, he was a week post-surgery. She is only four days post-surgery and she's already basically loosened them. Um, the incision is closed. It's not goozy, oozy, woozy, red, gross or any of that. However, I'm not thrilled that she already has started to yank the stitches out. Talk to the vet tomorrow, which is Monday. They're amazing at getting us in almost immediately if there's a problem. So if he feels that it's a problem, she will go back in and they will do whatever they need to do to make sure she stays healthy. Uh, yeah, it's been a ride. So I'm going to let the video kind of speak for itself. And then I will briefly touch on the other signs and symptoms of adrenal. Um, just so you guys can be aware of what to look for. I got really lucky because Ruby showed a pretty outward sign it was very clear very quickly um, and I was able to get her to the vet very quickly as a result of that but let's watch the video and then I will come back and explain a little bit more about what to look for if your ferret were to have adrenal disease and weren't showing such obvious signs like a swollen vulva No, come here. No, don't get in the cabinet. No, ma'am. Okay, so tomorrow Miss Ruby here is going to go in for surgery. She is having some problems with her adrenal. You see how swollen her vulva is? That's not normal. She was went to the vet two days ago and was diagnosed with adrenal disease. If you look at Lucy, um, you notice that you can't see her private area at all. It's a normal size. It's not protruding or swollen or sticking out. Whereas with Miss Ruby, the minute that you lift her tail, all you see is her private area. That's not normal. Um, it's a sign of adrenal disease. There's several signs um, that a ferret can display when they have adrenal disease. That is one of them. Sometimes they'll start to lose hair. Normally it begins at the tip of the tail and goes up. Um, I'm actually a little worried. We're going to take um, this little guy. This is Weasel, my oldest. He's going to go in just for a checkup because even though he's acting fine, he's an old man now. Yes, you are. And I always worry about him. His hair is also thinning, but he has it all. He's not losing any hair. Um, but he is a little thin. He never got his winter coat this year. His tail's yellow because he's an old man now. Um, I don't know if that's what that means, but the older he gets, the more his coat gets lighter and changes color. He was dark as night when I got him. So we are going to be taking him to the vet just for a checkup. But Miss Ruby Jane 
is going in tomorrow for adrenal gland surgery. So we can fix you up, right, my lovey? As soon as I noticed the um, swell swelling, I took her to the vet. So this hasn't been going on very long. The vet seems to think we caught it pretty early. It's unfortunately not a very uncommon situation in ferrets, particularly the ones that come from um, breeders like Marshall Farms or places where they mass produce ferrets in large quantities, not in the greatest conditions. Um, so, and that's all of my ferrets did come from a pet store. Uh, some I got from other people who couldn't take care of them. Some I got before I knew how bad Marshall's Farms was. And at the end of the day, I love my babies. I can't, you know, I wouldn't train them for the world, but I also feel strongly that it's my responsibility to make sure that they receive all the care that they need and deserve. Isn't that right? Goofy doofy. So. You've been acting pretty normal, but you're definitely more tired than normal, aren't you, boo? You want to get in your new cow house from Miss Susan? Okay, go ahead. Mama got that for you because I'm in love with it. So she'll probably be on cage rest. She's not going to be thrilled about it. Come here, Goofy Doof. Come here, little Weasel Diesel. Weasel Dees. Come here, Weasel. Come here, buddy. What are you doing, Weasel? What are you doing? Look at this bunny rabbit. What are you doing, little Weasel? I love you, Weasel. I love you, Weasel Do. I love you, my dear. My little old dear. This is my oldest, oldest boy. He's a, still a goof. Still the same goof. He's the same goof he's always been. Oh, same klutzy goof. <laughs> and he, he falls all over. He broke his front leg when he was a baby. And now whenever he jumps and runs, he looks like a little drunk. I just call him my little drunk. <laughs> you go get surgery this morning? Yes, ma'am. I love you. You ready to go? You hungry. I know. You're mad at me. I'm sorry. You had to fast. I'm sorry. So we just picked up Ruby. She's high on anesthesia. <laughs> poor baby. My poor little baby. We're gonna go home now, okay? All right, so Ruby is home from surgery. She got a bare belly and lots of stitches. She's clearly still a little drowsy. We're gonna leave her be. I love you, baby. I'll check on you soon, okay? Ruby. Hi. Hi, Ruber. Hi, girl. Oh, we're sleeping. Let me see your thumb. Did you hurt yourself? No. You can't have this food. It's for your sister. Good morning, pretty girl. God, take some medicine so you don't hurt, okay? Let's get you some medicine, some waters. Baby dupe. Okay, good morning, girl. Okay, easy, 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 easy. Here, bring your butt out. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I know you're upset. It's okay. I'm going to get your medicine, okay, so you don't hurt. Good morning. Good morning, babies. <laughs> what are y'all doing? Good morning. You ready to come out and get some breakfast? All right, we got it. We gotta feed your sister, get your sister her medicine. All right, let's get you some breakfast. Let's check on Sissy. Hey, Sissy. Hi, little girl. <clears throat> Are you going crazy in there yet? I'm gonna come get you. I'm coming to get you. I know you don't wanna be in there. I understand. I do, and I'm sorry. I don't make the rules, and half the time I don't follow them. But in this situation, I gotta listen. I know, I don't like it either. Listen, here. Look, I got some in water and some not in water. And I know that you're going to take it all in your room. So let's just only take the dry stuff in our room, okay? <laughs> I do see you because you're so stinking cute. What, Bear Bears? You don't have to get medicine today, but you have to get medicine tomorrow. I know. All right, let's go get Sissy. She's very upset with me. Hi. Hi, baby. Can I, Did you take any of your stitches out? Can Mommy see your tummy? Oh, not too bad. He pulled him out a little bit. Shocking. Listen. Okay. I know. I know it. I'm sorry. I know. I know. You're not supposed to take the stitches out, Diggy. Yeah, you can't take the stitches out. I know you want to get out of there. I know. I know you don't like the cage. I don't think you've ever really been caged very long. Let's get your medicine and get some breakfast. You can't run around, baby. Hold on. Hey, you heard us wanted some breakfast with her brother. 
What? I know. You don't like it. I'll get you your breakfast. Hold on. I'll get you breakfast. Hold on. I know. You don't like this breakfast. All right. <clears throat> so, she has to get lots of medicine. Four, actually, to be exact. Um... She does actually really good, much better than the boys did whenever I have to give Weasel or Bear any medicine. <clears throat> it's like fighting a alligator. So, um, let's see. This is her pain medicine, which I like to give her first because I don't want her to be in pain. She gets point one, point <laughs> one mil, which is really not a lot. All right. Pain medicine. I like to get them all ready <clears throat> at one time. Sorry, you guys. I am um a little sick. Point seven. That's this one. Okay, there's that. Hey, Ruby, you gotta get your medicine, girl. And then what's this one? Oh, they hate this one too. Ruby. Hey, Ruby. Hey. Come on. I get some medicine. Want to get your medicine? Okay. Okay, you ready? Come here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here. 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 This one's extra gross, okay? This one's good. This one's good. This is good medicine. No, this one's good. I like this one. Okay, she's. I'm gonna let her just go do what she needs to do for a minute. I gotta let her out a second. She's getting crazy and she's taking her stitches out. I just gotta watch and make sure they don't wanna help her take her stitches out. Don't be gentle with her. She's going to get a drink. She's going to the bathroom. You can't get in the drawer, baby. We've been through this 3,970 times. Thank you. Okay. Don't go underneath the sink either. Ruby, dude, come here, babe. Alright, Ruby, come on, you gotta go back to your cage, boo boo. Yes, he's so beautiful. I know your sister wants to give you a kiss. I know. You licking, you cleaning, sissy? Gotta be gentle. She's okay. She wants to eat her snack in peace. What is this? Trash, give me that. I know you guys already had a treat. You can't have 5,000 treats. No, he's no 5,000 treats for you. You. I was watching videos of you, and you were a lot darker. Did you know that, little girl? Yes, a ma'am. Yes, a ma'am, you was. You were so much darker. Yeah, now you're light. All right, Janie Rain. Come on, Ruby Dooby Doo. What are you doing in here? <laughs> what are you doing in here? What you doing, Rube? You enjoying the fresh air? Those curtains are crazy. They don't go down long enough, do they, boo? That's because our windows are weird. And we can't have longer ones, so you guys will climb them. Alright, you want to come out a couple minutes? Okay, come on. You want to go see your sissy? You want to go see your sissies and brothers? There you go, okay? Okay. So, hey, say hey, Luz. Hey, Bear Bear. Let's show everybody your tummy. Okay, so just an update on Bear, who also had surgery for a different disease. He's getting some tummy growth. You can't see a scar anymore. He looks amazing. He's doing wonderful. He's supposedly, right now, he's cancer-free. Yes, sir. Yes, you are, my little love bug. You are. You're perfect. Oh, you're perfect, lovey. Okay, so that's exciting. So there is no 
cut and dry reason why a ferret can get adrenal disease. It is common in old, ferrets older than two years old. It is very much thought to have a close relationship between the early spaying and neutering of ferrets. Um, there's some other beliefs involved in that too. So I'm just going to read you something that um, my vet actually talked to me about this the other day. So this is something that's been discussed in the, la in the last couple of years. Basically, the exact cause of adrenal gland changes that lead to the disease are not known. Um, early neutering combined with artificially prolonged photo period experienced by indoor pet ferrets and possibly a genetic component may contribute, may be contributing factors. So there's a couple of different <clears throat> things that people believe are associated with your ferret getting adrenal disease. But what I can tell you is that if your ferret has adrenal disease, there are some symptoms that you're gonna wanna look out for. Um, and then get them to the vet as quickly as you can. Adrenal disease left untreated can result in tumors and can ultimately result in death. So what I can say is I'm going to read you a list of common um, symptoms to look for. So hair loss, mainly starting at the base of the tail and working its way up. If you ever been online or watched a video or seen a ferret that's basically bald, that ferret probably has adrenal disease. It does cause hair loss. It can cause them to be really itchy. In Ruby's case, she had a swollen vulva. Basically, you'll in the video, you saw that if you lifted her tail, you could completely see her private area without trying at all. Um, there's also, it's been said that um, males will show an increase in aggression. So if you have a male ferret that's really chill and all of a sudden is aggressive and he's over two, or even if he's under two, if anything weird like that happens, you should probably talk to your vet. I am not a vet, so we all know that. So remember, this is just some information. If you have questions or you're worried or you feel that you want more information, please speak to a professional who went to school, who knows these things far better than I do. Um, I am not the person to give out medical advice, but I can give you experiences or examples. Um, another really common side effect is they can be itchy. Um, thinning of the skin, I don't even know <laughs> what that means. Um, I mean, I have an idea what that means, but, or being lethargic. Um, and I'm sure there's some other, there's probably some other um, symptoms as well, but those are the main ones. But if you see any changes in your ferrets, and, and for me, when my ferrets get sick, whether it's with one of the main diseases or just a regular cold or, or anything, I notice pretty quickly. My ferrets are typically act to behave a certain way all the time. If their behavior changes in any way, especially a way that's abnormal, like they're sleeping more, they're not eating, they're not going to the bathroom, they don't want to play, they have no interest in anything. If any of those things start to happen with any of my ferrets, I don't wait and wait and wait and wait to see what happens. They go to the vet like pretty fast. Ferrets, like lots of animals, are really good at trying to hide their illnesses. Um, ferrets also, in my experience, when they're sick and they go downhill, they go downhill quickly. So for me, anytime I see anything different, abnormal, not anything changing, if, if it lasts longer than a day, like we're going to the vet. Sometimes if it's something that's really glaringly obvious that something's wrong, um, they go to the vet that day. Like I don't play with them and their health because it terrifies me to think that if I wait too long, it could be too late to help them. I know that probably sounds traumatic. Um, I love them so much and I just know that their little bodies can only withstand so much and that it can, things can happen really fast and really quickly. I've been really fortunate or I'm just neurotic. I'm not really sure, but I do take them to the vet anytime that I even remotely think that one of them is sick. And every single time that I've done that, I've never been wrong. Um, I, my vet probably thinks that I'm crazy, but he assures me that he doesn't because they always end up having something wrong with them when I do take them. Anyway, Ruby's going to be okay. <clears throat> um, everything is okay. But I did want to share our experience with you guys because I think it's important. Ferrets are fun and they're awesome and I love them and I would never trade them for the world. There's a whole other side. And when they get older, they can become very, for lack of a better word, kind of high maintenance when it comes to their health. Um, I'm at the point now where I'm getting ready to start taking Weasel and a couple of the other older ones to the vet instead of annual checkups. I'm about to do um, by annual checkups, so twice a year. And if I need to, I'll do it three times a year. They're just getting older and things, like I said, change really quickly and they're really good at hiding things. Right now, Weasel looks like he's acting normal, but I, my gut tells me that he needs to go and have a full checkup. Just something in my gut just doesn't sit right now. There's not showing any kind of outward signs. His hair is really thin. He 
eats like a pig, but he never gains weight. I'm sure he could be fine, but I want to know for sure. So he'll be going to the vet soon here to get a checkup, even though his annual checkup isn't due for a couple weeks, actually probably a couple months. Um, anyway, you know, they're my babies. They're my babies. But I hope you guys have a great week. I, again, apologize for this pain in the butt voice. It's so annoying. And I will see you guys next time.